to our Longhorn nursing students, our faculty, staff, and supporters to the 2020 Nursing White Coat Ceremony at the University of Texas at Austin School of Nursing. 27 years ago, in 19, I gotta put my black on so I can show you the 1993, um, some of you, most of you probably weren't born just then. Uh, the RMP Gold Foundation launched its white coat uh, ceremonies. And the purpose of these were to welcome and initiate new classes of medical students uh, to emphasize humanistic, patient centered care. Clearly, a value that has been at the center of what we teach and practice at the University of Texas at Austin School of Nursing. In 2014, the Gold Foundation partnered with the American Association of Colleges of Nursing to launch white coat ceremonies for nursing students. And our School of Nursing was one of the first uh, of that initial group of 100 nursing schools in the nation that the Gold Foundation and the American Association of Colleges of, Colleges of Nursing <coughs> selected in 2014 to receive funding to support and pilot white coat ceremonies for nursing students. By inviting nursing students into the White Coat Ceremonies Initiative, the Gold Foundation and the American Association of Colleges of Nursing joined the School of Nursing at the University of Texas at Austin to send a clear message that all health professionals had an essential role to play in providing competent and compassionate care. We found that that first White Coat Ceremony in 2014 was so meaningful that we've turned that into a school of nursing tradition. We have lots of fun tradition. You are the 10th group of students who will take an oath today or tonight to provide quality and compassionate care prior to beginning your clinical uh, studies at the School of Nursing. As part of today's ceremony, each of our students will receive a specially designed pen to serve as a visual reminder of your commitment as a nurse to provide compassionate and quality care. By having this, this School of Nursing host today's white coat ceremony, I am reiterating to you, our Longhorn nursing students, two very important messages. First, that competent, compassionate care is the hallmark of clinical practice in nursing. And second, that we as a School of Nursing take great pride and having you represent Longhorn Nursing as you embark on your clinical mission. So this event is not only a ceremony, but also a celebration. A celebration of a high quality education and healthcare and service that you as a Longhorn Nursing student provide to the community. And we are pleased to have one of our very special faculty members this evening, Dr. Anna Todd, who will provide the keynote for today's ceremony. Dr. Todd is a strong model and really an exemplar of the very kind of intelligent, compassionate care that we are recognizing today. So please join me in welcoming Dr. Anna Todd. Good evening. This is a treat having this at my level. <laughs> Welcome. Welcome to this year's White Coat, this semester's White Coat Ceremony. I recognize a few of you. Raise your hand if I've had you in. Oh, yes. Ethics, right? Okay. Costa Rica. Okay. All right. Well, welcome. I also need my glasses as well. <clears throat> okay. Okay. So, over the last two years, you've learned a lot about the theory what it means to be a nurse, and now you're going to be able to provide nursing care at the bedside and in the community. You will be applying what we call the art of nursing, the science and the art of nursing. So tonight I'm going to be focusing on the art of nursing through compassionate care. The dictionary definition of compassion is as follows. Sympathetic consciousness of others. Distress together with a desire to alleviate that stress. Distress. So when I ask the majority of my five children to define compassion, 
These were some of the comments. Compassion is when you put yourself in the place of the person who's in need of help and take action to make it better. This was my youngest child, who was a political science major. Now she's doing sales. Okay. Um, it is not just sympathy. It's compassion. It's when you feel empathetic towards your patient. You meet them where they are and then do something that will help them to be independent. Compassionate care is when you notice the gentleman who's been wearing the same dirty socks for a week in rehab and you ask him if he wants a fresh pair of socks. That was my, that's my daughter who's an occupational therapist. Um, compassion is walking around in someone else's shoes so you can help them. That's my nurse. Um, compassion is gentle, kind, sympathy. Compassionate care is when you take the time to engage in your patient. It's the little things that you do. That's my son who's a lawyer. I chose not to interview my oldest child because if you knew him, he might get angry when you ask him about interviewing him. He's a, he's a financial advisor, so I don't, I don't ask him anything depending on what's happening on Wall Street. So from my very small survey, I was able to get the sense that compassion can have slightly different meanings, but consistent, what is consistent is the notion that compassion is a sentiment that serves as a catalyst, a catalyst that fuels an action, a caring action. Compassion and compassionate care is a core element of nursing. In fact, compassion is so essential to nursing that the very first provision in the ANA Code of Ethics, who knows that provision? I won't test you, okay. It states the nurse practices with compassion and respect for the inherent dignity, worth, and unique attributes of every person. So what does compassionate care look like? Who's ever spent time in the hospital or knows somebody who has spent time in the hospital? Okay. Well, I can tell you from my personal experience as a patient for two back surgeries, I recall that most of the nurses would just pull up wide into your room and hand you the medications and ask you on a scale of one to 10, what is your pain level? And I wanted to say 7.2854. Was there compassion there? <clears throat> Most of the time, there wasn't. Nobody made eye contact. They were too busy, came into the room, and it was almost like drive-through meds. But then there was one nurse who was dressed in her, what we would call the whites back, back in the day. And she actually happened to be an instructor. She was an older seasoned nurse who came in. She had to pull up a chair. Did you know it doesn't take that much more time to pull up a chair? And she asked, she put her hand on my hand. She asked me first, can I put my hand on your hand? And she said, she said, how are you? And boy, that I hadn't heard those words. I, I, I almost wanted to say, wow, wait, you're actually talking to me? You're talking to me. And are you willing to touch me? I was so grateful for her, for her compassionate care that day. That meant so much to me because she recognized the need that I had for that kind of support. She took the time. She spoke to me, not at me. How many of you have experienced that? Yes. Okay. So she was reassuring, and most importantly, she was present. She was present. And I know students, you've heard this before, right? Presence, being present. So just being there was a comfort. So one of the most beautiful examples of compassionate care was shared uh, to me by my friend, who's actually a CNS, specializing in, in the geriatric population. She actually graduated from the University of Texas here. Um, and she actually happens to be a blind nurse. She had a, she was taking care of a 90 year old man who was admitted to the hospital following a fall. The next day, my friend who was the care manager received a call from this gentleman, 
wife who said she was too sick to come. She was admitted to the hospital for pneumonia the next day and was placed on the same floor as her husband. They had been married for 65 years, but they were not together. So my friend, they'd never been separated before. He was too weak to be moved in a wheelchair. And so my friend thought, I need to be creative. So she went down to the ER actually, and she spoke to the nurses and, and said, how can we get a stretcher from the ER? And initially the, they, the hospital nurses and the staff said, absolutely not. You're not taking one of our gurneys. Well, she persisted and she, after some convincing, they put the husband on the stretcher and brought him to see his wife. They raised her bed to the level of, level of the stretcher so that he could hold her hand. My friend left the room to give them time together. And shortly after her husband, after that, the husband called the nurses and my friend let them know that his wife had passed away. That's true compassion care. Allowing them to be together in the last moment, taking that time. I had the privilege of watching my nursing students in public health every week. They deliver compassionate care all the time. But the most interesting is when we go and visit the women experiencing homelessness at the Trinity Center. They listen. They're listening to the stories being present to listen to these clients who thank the students every week and say to them, thank you for being here for us. Thank you for listening to us when nobody else does. That's compassion. There are a few, these are just a few examples of compassionate care. A manifestation of the art of nursing. Walk around in someone else's shoes, in your patient's shoes, empathize with them, walk with them, and most of all, act on it so you can help your patients maintain their independence and their dignity. I would like to add that while you're practicing compassion, you need to practice self-compassion. What is self-compassion? You probably have heard people say, how can you help someone else? How can you help take care of others if you can't take care of yourself? Most of us choose nursing as a profession to nurture and care for others. And many of us in this profession ignore our own self-care, right? I know we can probably shake our heads, right? And we fail to engage in self-compassion. Kristen Neff, who is a renowned expert in self-compassion, and she happens to be a professor right here at the University of Texas at Austin, she defines self-compassion as, quote, a self-attitude that involves treating oneself with warmth and understanding in difficult times and recognizing that making mistakes is part of being human. She goes on to say, being self-compassionate is treating yourself in the same way you will treat a good friend when you're having when you are having hard times, you fail, or you notice you don't like something about yourself by being supportive and loving to yourself. So remember, while you're busy making a difference in your patient's life, that I undoubtedly know you all will make a difference. Please take time to mindfully shower yourself with that self-compassion and know that you're not supposed to be perfect. So, today marks the celebration into your opportunity to become one of the countless nurses who are passionate about compassionate care. Go forth and wear your white proudly. I'm going to leave you with the following poem. It is called, What Do You See? It, nurse. What do you see, nurse? What do you see? What are you thinking when you're looking at me?
a crabby old woman, not very wise, uncertain of habit, with faraway eyes, who dribbles her food and makes no reply when you say in a loud voice, I do wish you try, who seems not to notice the things that you do, and forever is losing a stocking or shoe, who resisting or not lets you do as you will with bathing and feeding the long day to fill. Is that what you're thinking? Is that what you see? Then open your eyes, nurse. You're not looking at me. I'll tell you who I am as I sit here so still, as I do at your bidding, as, you, as I eat at your will. I'm a small child of 10 with a father and mother, brothers and sister, one who love one another. A young girl of 16 with wings on her feet, dreaming that soon now a lover shall meet, a bride soon at 20. My heart gives a leap, remembering the vows that I promised to keep. At 25 now, I have young of my own who need me to guide and guide a secure, happy home. A woman of 30, my young now grow fast, bound to each other with ties that should last. At 40, my young sons have grown and are gone, but my man's beside me to see I don't mourn. At 50, once more babies play around my knee. Again, we know children, my loved one and me. Dark days are upon me, my husband is dead. I look at the future, I shudder with dread. For my young are all rearing, young of their own. And I think of the years and the love that I've known. I'm now an old woman and nature's cruel. The body, tis, tis just to make old age look like a fool. The body, it crumbles, grace and vigor depart. There's now a stone where I once had a heart. But inside this old carcass, a young girl still dwells. And now and again, my battered heart swells. I remember the joys, I remember the pain, and I'm loving and living life over again. I think of the years all too few gone too fast, and accept the stark fact that nothing can last. So open your eyes, nurse, open and see. Not a crabby old woman, look closer, see me. Congratulations. Thank you, Dr. Todd, for sharing um, with us your wisdom and your story and that lovely poem. I hear it all the time and I, I try not to cry. Um, yeah, it's so meaningful and I'm sure it's very meaningful for our students as well. So um, good evening, students and family. My name is Ben Wynn. I'm the Assistant Dean for Student Services. So what that means is that I get to work with a wonderful team as well as a faculty on the committee. Uh, working with students from the time that you said, please let me in, to the time you said, please let me out. <laughs> uh, so tonight, I want to uh, give you an opportunity to listen to a senior one student. I know that you've uh, heard from a junior two student during the orientation uh, to help you succeed in getting out and getting, getting through. Because after this year, next year, you could be graduating. It's going to be, it's come very soon, right? So uh, congratulations now and, and also in the future. So our S1 that's speaking with us uh, today, her name is Kiyashine Williams, and I'm very happy to have her. Please come on stage. Thank you for having me. Good evening, family, friends, faculty, and staff. Thank you for joining us in celebrating this wonderful achievement of the graduating class of fall 2021. Today, they'll be receiving a panel of white coats to represent their commitments regarding compassionate care in their clinical rotation. To the families in attendance, I can only imagine how excited you all are to witness your loved ones embark on this new journey. After all, you've given them so much love, support, and guidance to keep them in their goal of becoming a nurse. My fellow nursing students, congratulations. You all have worked so hard to get to this point, and I can promise you it's worth it. This is the game of the learning experience that will call you well into your career. You may be feeling excited, anxious, or maybe even fearful, which is normal. 
This experience you want to start is unknown, but it's what your instructors and teaching assistants have spent class time and office hours preparing you for. I can guarantee you're ready. Much like you all, I had many questions running through my mind at my ceremony. What my patient does in the nurse? Nurses to me. <laughs> um, what if I forget part of my assessment? And from my experience, I can attest you don't have to worry about anything. Your clinical instructors will be by your side to ensure you provide safe and exceptional care to all your patients. The most important questions you should ask yourself are Will I learn from my mistakes? Can I admit when I don't know something? Or will I use my clinical time to maximize the learning? Over the past year, I've learned that no one is perfect. Better yet, there is no perfect nurse. You can only be the best version of yourself, which requires work. And that comes with the willingness to make mistakes. I can remember my things yesterday when my instructor asked me why my patient was submitting 81 milligrams of aspirin. In my mind, it made sense that it was for pain, but no. She said, think. So I started to think, and at this point, I'm nervous and my mind is scrambled. I decided to just admit that I don't recall what's the use of aspirin for. What's the use of aspirin? She looked at me and said, that's okay. We'll take a look at their history together. I finally concluded that the use of aspirin was to prevent blood clots, which I knew, but that was only after I put aside my pride and simply said, I don't know. Be patient with yourself, have self-care, take your time and breathe. You know a lot more than you think you do. I received valuable education in the classroom, but the main lessons came from people. One event in particular changed my perspective entirely. On this day, I was prepared and had all my paperwork completed, and while I debriefed with my instructor, she asked me to tell her about my patient. So I just started to give I started to give a brief, condensed report, and she stopped me and said, No. Tell me who your patient is. Is he married? Does he work? Does he have kids? And at that moment, I realized I was providing care to a man I knew nothing about. It's easy to get caught up in the routine of tedious paperwork and focus on the grade. But the main purpose of clinical is to practice integrating your competency as a nurse with compassionate and empathetic patients that you care. The patients you are caring for are more than just a diagnosis. They are mothers, fathers, sons, and daughters, and they deserve to be seen as such. What I hope you take into your clinical rotation is a reminder that you must do it. The whole purpose of clinical is to learn each day and become better than the day before. Be aware that it's okay to make mistakes with your clinical instructor by your side. They know that you're learning and will educate you one on one. Their support and education are both invaluable. Throughout this experience, you will learn so much and be more confident walking into the next clinical. But it's only up to you to be an active participant in your learning and take advantage of every opportunity that comes your way. A year ago, I was sitting in those same seats. I had so much going on at that time in all areas of my life. To start off, I was a part-time employee of St. Davis Medical Center, working in my shift as a patient care tech. With this job came a lot of responsibility since I was doing just about everything the nurses do except give medications and try my system. On any given night, I would care for 12 to 17 patients, which may not seem like a lot. When you factor in how many times people have to go to the restroom, need ice and food, and vitals taken every four hours, trust me, you'll reach your weekly step count in those two 12 hour shifts. During this time last year, I was also starting the process of joining the sorority. That itself was a curriculum on its own and an everyday commitment. Not only to myself, but to my sister, the Delta Sigma Family Sorority Incorporated. To recap, I had nursing classes, work, and clinical twice a week, sorority life daily, and on top of that, I had to remember to eat and sleep. As you can guess, time management became more than just a skill on my resume. It became my life and definitely my key to success. 
Learn to prioritize will help you so much in clinical and in life. It will get you from those seats to where I'm standing now. A since graduate from December 2020. In closing, I want to leave you with a quote by the late great Kobe Bryant, world renowned athlete and philanthropist. If you're afraid to fail, then you're probably going to fail. We all have self doubt. You don't deny it, but you also don't succumb to it. You embrace it. My words of wisdom to you are to take it one syllabus at a time, one class at a time, one exam at a time, and one clinical at a time. Keep going and don't strive for perfection. Strive to be the best you. Don't judge success by being first or having the highest grade. Judge it on whether you made an impact on your patients here. I hope you all feel as the parents I know you are to go out there and show everyone that what starts here changes the world. So good morning. Thank you, Thank you I, I think they're ready to graduate. <laughs> Next, I'd like to thank all our faculty uh, who are going to help us with the training uh, tonight. And uh, we have three faculty uh, who are helping. Dr. Janice Hernandez, if uh, you come up here, please. Ms. Amy Hall. Ms. Esther Nawakwitcher. Now the moment that we've been waiting for, the penny flip. Students, I have a three-step instruction for you. Uh, first is have your pen in your hand when you're up. Uh, separate the pen from the back. All right, separate the pen from the back. And when I call your name, approach a faculty pair. Uh, we will do three students uh, will be pinned at a time. Now, uh, I, just, you know, I have a question, which faculty do you go up to? You pick your favorite faculty. <laughs> I'm sure they're all your favorite faculty. Uh, so some of y'all might be walking faster than uh, others, so pick the faculty that is all. All right. Uh, after you're pinned, you would exit through the door to the right over here and walk around the NPR room and then come back through the center aisle to your seat. All right? We got this. Okay. Now instructions for guests. Uh, we ask that you hold your applause until uh, the three set, uh, each, the three students are done. That way we can hear everyone's name. Okay. All right. So, uh, Ms. Glass will get you all stand up. Camille Best, Brett Bean, Isayan Castillo. <laughs> Emily Chippen, Julia Chestnut, and Faith Holbach.
Yasmin Daher, Vivian Dang, Ferdinand De La Garza. Vivian. <laughs> Sofio Escatillo Barrios, Lauren Garcia, Emily Gindler. Joshua Gonzalez, Caitlin Gonzalez, Riley Grant. Sarah Han, Suman Biman, Liban Oren. Emily Houston, Haley Holkins, Inara, Hyder Alley. Alyssa Hyo, Kelly Knight, Emily Kurnovic. Kaylin Lane, Jordan Lee, Rowan Lights. Hannah Lewis, Vivian Lee, Haley McNamara. Yasmin Mendez, Madison Miller, Helen McCurry. Haley Mackerman, Samantha, Samantha Much More, Serena Wynn. Heather 
Obermiller, Kiana Provo, Alice Quiet. Ocio Rodriguez, Karina <laughs> Rojas, Elizabeth Sloan. Kaylee Stevens, Matthew Tran, Nadine Twazon. Grace Updegro, Gianni Bort, Belfort, Benita Biswasan. Anna Weisenberg, <laughs> you remember your name on a list, Katie Tate? Emily Tate, Emily Tate, sorry. Now we bring Dean Stacker Bergen up. Did I miss anybody? I didn't miss anybody, right? Any parents want to walk? I'll bring Dean Stacker back up for the podium, uh, to the podium to do the oath. Thank you, Ben. And thank you again, all of you, for coming tonight to share in this uh, wonderful occasion. When you're the Dean, you get to start and end things. It's kind of fun. So, uh, if you all look on the back of your program, which I don't have, here we go. Um, there's an O. So, the nursing white coat of, everybody has it. Uh, do you want to stand, Penny, and we'll read this together? Ready? I know you can all read really well, so join. As a long term nurse, providing the highest quality care and services, I solemnly pledge that I will consider the welfare of humanity and relief of suffering my primary concerns, act in a compassionate and trustworthy manner in all aspects of my care. Apply my knowledge, experience, and skills to the best of my ability to assure optimal outcomes for my patients. Exercise sound professional judgment while abiding by legal and ethical requirements. 
accept the lifelong obligation to improve my professional knowledge and competence, promote, advocate for, and strive to protect safety and rights of the patient. With this pledge, I accept the duties and responsibilities and embody the nursing profession. I take this oath voluntarily with the full realization of the responsibility with which I am entrusted by the public. Thank you. Please be seated. Before we get to our next part, I'd like to take this time to thank the, our staff that uh, made this event possible. First, Ms. Rita Ruiz, back there. And um, she, she also has her helpers with her. Um, Katie Taylor. Ms. Michelle Barajas. have student helpers uh, as well. Uh, congratulations and, and, and thank all of y'all for, uh, for making uh, this event successful. Now students, before you go forth and serve with care, competency, and compassion, we'd like to have a group picture with you so that you can put your Facebook and LinkedIn and things like that. So we can have the students and the faculty please come up uh, front and center uh, for us to, uh, to take a picture. And, uh, and Ms. Jen? Now, our Jen is from the development, and she's an awesome photographer. You are all lucky that she's taking the picture, not me. Thank <laughs> you. 